ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Well, hello there, and welcome back to yet another FileMaker tutorial video where we are going to learn more about FileMaker Pro. My name is Matt Petrowski, bringing you these tutorials from my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. In this video tutorial, I'm happy to bring you the topic of customizing PDF output. A subscriber wrote in with a problem they were experiencing, and we're going to take a look at the solution. Let's head to my desktop and take a look at the file. All right, so here we are on the desktop and we're not looking at the file quite yet. As you can see, what we have right here is a PDF. And we've got a lot of really cool fish on here. And what came in was a request from a subscriber that asked they were creating a catalog type of output. As you can see, what this is on screen is we have a listing of a bunch of species of fish. And what she asked was, how can she have, at a certain point, a division such that this catalog will break things up based on certain species or based on categories? So you can see right here that we've got a cardinal fish in here, and that would be one type of fish, and then we would probably have a, another type of fish. So now that we've seen the request that came in, which as a subscriber, you are more than welcome to send in issues or problems that you have with FileMaker, and definitely, if it's worthy of a video, I may solve that problem. So now let's take a look at the file and the solution that we're going to get to this problem. Okay, so let's get started. Here is the file that we have access to. If you're a subs uh, subscriber, you will be able to just break this file apart. What I did is I kept things really simple in this file. As we look at the defined database, we are going to be able to see that really there's only a photograph, which that's representative of the fish that we were taking a look at. Of course, she had different categories, the species, genus, what have you. I just kept it a simple category. So really these are the two fields that we're most interested in. We will be sorting the database based on this field, the category, and of course in most every database we have this all important ID or our um, critical uh, UUID that identifies each record uniquely. So as we look at this database I'm using a um, master, uh, I forget what they call it, master detail, the, the uh, FileMaker what is it, FileMaker 17 or 18? I forget when they implemented that, but the portal that we have on the layout here allows us to see all of the records that we have in this database, of which there are 55 of them, as you can see. But I am going to click the Print Catalog button. Now I click that, the report is going to be made, and it's going to have the breakdown that is the request, which we're going to go over in this video, but it also includes a title page. So what I did is, for the solution, I went a little above and beyond, and I decided there are many times where you need to combine multiple different pieces to a report in order to generate that report. So you can see right here we have a title page. And then as we scroll, what we're going to see is we're going to see each category broken down according to its type. So in this case, we've got all of our blue. And you can see that because of the, each of IDs, all of the records are unique. And as we scroll down and get to another category, which comes up pretty close here, we've got green. So we are creating a page break. Now, if you have not worked with FileMaker with regards to output, and you have been wondering, how do I accomplish this? Can I have three items on a row? Can I have four items on the row? Yes, you can. You can have however many items you have for however many pictures. We are simply using the label printing capability of FileMaker in order to generate this PDF. But on top of that, what we're doing is we are combining multiple items. Now, one other thing I want you to notice that we're going to be solving here as I scroll up to, I've got the title page, which is page one. In fact, I can open this report. We'll go ahead and open it in preview. It's important to note that this is page one, as we can see, but when we get to page two and we take a look at this, down on the bottom, we can see that it is page two of eight. So we're getting the correct total number of pages and we're actually putting the right page number on the correct page for the whole of the report. Now that's something that you're going to have to programmatically figure out yourself whenever you're doing a custom complex PDF where you're merging a couple of other PDFs together. But we're going to take a look at that and all of the details that make this happen and how to put this report together and put it in a container field. So let's head into the guts of this solution, break everything down and understand what we're doing. Let's do that now. 
Okay, so let's go through each of the pieces to this solution. It is pretty straightforward. This is all native FileMaker, and you do not need to do a lot of complex things, although towards the end of this video, I will give you some uh, information about how you can take this well beyond what we've got here natively in FileMaker and create some super complex reports. Now, of course, when we go into the Manage Layouts, which I will do right now, we'll go to Manage, and then we'll go to Layouts, we are going to see that one of the things that I like to do is I like to create a folder called output and that output folder is going to contain all of my specific layouts for output. So in this case we're going to have a title page which is a separate layout then we're going to have a catalog. Now in this case I've got just two of them but if you're creating something like let's say a prospectus or something that has many different types of output and you want to do this all within FileMaker, you're going to need a given layout for each of the possible output types that you're going to have. Then fundamentally what we're going to do is we're going to print from each of those and then we're going to merge them all together or combine them and FileMaker will do this. I forget when they added the feature to their uh, pre, uh, PDF driver, but they do have that. So let's open up the title page. It is super simple. And when we're in the title page, we're going to take a look at some of the things that we need to do in order to successfully set up any type of output. If you're not familiar with FileMaker, if you're just getting started, even if you're intermediate and you haven't been exposed, there are a number of things that will help you significantly for output. Number one, we can already see what, right what we have here up at top. The ruler becomes super helpful. Everything that we need, we are going to find under the view menu, where we are going to choose to see our rulers, which helps us with our measurement system. Now, if you don't already know, you can uh, toggle between all of the different measurement systems that FileMaker provides, which currently is only in points, formerly was pixels, uh, centimeters and inches. Now this area, this little item right here, point, I'll go ahead and click on this once I'm off the menu, this allows you to cycle through the measurement systems. You can also do it within the inspector which we can take a look at. Page breaks is another thing that you're going to want to turn on. Page margins is another thing that you're going to want to turn on whenever you're creating an output uh, or something for output. Um, grid and guides, I really only use those for the purpose of a layout design for my UI. And when I'm designing my UI, page breaks and page margins are turned off. But for the purpose of output, it helps us to be able to see these things, which we can see here in browse mode. As soon as I go into layout mode, or excuse me, we, uh, we are in layout mode. Let's go to browse mode. There we go. Let's go to preview mode. There in preview mode, we're able to see what the page is going to look like. But back in this mode, in our layout mode, if I size this down, let's see, there we go. You can see that line that just appeared right there on the bottom of the screen. Now that is our, when we are taking a look at it, our page breaks. So if I turn that off, you can see that that line goes away. So we want the page break on. That allows us to size that right up to the point where we need it. Now, prior to that, if you haven't already done so, you always have to choose what is your page setup? What is the output device that you're going to be outputting to? And we can go up to the page setup right here. And once we select that, that's going to come up. Now the page setup is something that we are probably only going to want to do once if we can. And we will see in the scripts that we are using a dedicated script just for the purpose of setting up the page. Because once we have chosen these settings, the fact that in the US here, I'm going to use US letter. If you're in uh, the EU, you're probably going to use an A4. If you're doing something that's legal, you're going to use a legal size. If you're doing something that's much oversized, you're going to do a tabloid. If you need something that is absolutely specific, then by all means, you can manage your custom sizes. Now what happens is FileMaker will use whatever settings are in the page setup at the point in time that you add the page setup script step to your script. And that's what we're going to do. That includes the orientation right here, whether you're going to be in portrait or landscape. So with those settings and with the page margin turned on, we can get all of our settings correct for the page. So now that we understand how to get the page correct, now let's take a look at how we set up for printing this catalog or multiple items, either going left to right or 
uh, down, these are all controlled using the label output. So let's take a look at that process. Okay, for the catalog page, the one that we have right here, I'm going to walk you through the process so that you can see what I did in order to get exactly what I wanted, including the divisions on all of the different uh, categories. Now there's a bunch of ways that you can do the same thing in FileMaker. I can click on the new button right here and simply just create a new layout. Now what's going to happen is it's going to go into FileMaker's wizard. The other way that I would be able to access that is if I was already in layout mode with Command or Control L right now, I can always go up to the layout menu and choose new layout report. Both the exact same way, it's just going to get me into this dialog. Once I'm in this dialog, I of course can name this whatever I want. For right now, I'm going to call it Labels, and I'm going to select the printer output. Now, it's important to note that in FileMaker, you don't have to use this new layout report or wizard at all. In fact, I could have just gone up to the new and just simply click Finish. In fact, that's a pretty good thing to do because it makes you familiar with all of the different settings that you need to have, and FileMaker hasn't done something for you automatically that maybe you don't understand. But if we click the printer, then of course we can choose any one of these labels, vertical labels, envelopes, or report. So in this case, what we're doing is we are using labels, not for labels, but for an image catalog. So we simply select labels, and this wizard comes up and it has all kinds of different settings. Now we are going to be modifying this to what we specifically want. All of these labels are all, all pre-selected based on standard sizes, based on these Avery labels that you can get hold of. We can, use, of course, use our custom measurements. And then from here, we get to choose how many images across or down that we want. So if we want four, we can put in four. If we want five, we can put in five. Notice the number is red right there because this isn't going to come out necessarily. Well, I mean, I don't know why they're doing it red, but I always found that interesting. That it does change. Maybe it's my operating system. Um, I presumed that the red meant that this measurement isn't actually going to work. So if I specified four and you specify a width that you don't have available, in other words, you can't put four columns at two and just over two and a half within an eight and a half wide area with fixed margins, then that's your situation. So my suggestion, if you know that you want four, just set a lower value because you're going to be able to adjust this once you get into the actual layout. In fact, you'll have to adjust this. The height also, you can adjust that as well. Let's say that I'm going to go with uh, two inches, really big one, and I'm going to set some fixed margins. You can see that on the bottom here, it uses a larger margin, and sometimes that's dependent on the printer. Your printer defines what it actually can use in terms of the margin for how it grips the page and pulls it through the printer. So for right now, I'm just going to specify equal margins all the way around of 0.25 or a quarter of an inch and we'll click next. Now it's going to say, what do you want to add? Now in this case, I can add the photo right off the bat, but what we're going to see is adding the photo won't necessarily work because as we click finish, what we get is we get a page that isn't necessarily what we want. In fact, this won't work at all so much that I have to basically do what I suggested originally. I could have just created the new layout create, finish, and then go through all of the steps and modify the settings, which the reason I suggested it is why you want to know where these settings are. So in this scenario, what you can see is that for each of the labels, I can drag and make the label size whatever I want. Now, because of the page setup, when we go to page setup, if this was in a landscape orientation, we will see that this will probably adjust or maybe it won't in terms of my margins. Let's see, I am viewing my, I am not viewing my page margins and my page breaks, which I will need to turn those on. Once I do, then when I drag this, I can see where everything is going to end. So right here, this is telling me, here is the end of my page based on the fact that it's a landscape. If I go back to that page setup, and specify this orientation, you'll see that that shrinks up. And now when I drag the size of the layout, I can see where that actually is going to end up. So this is the end of my page. Now remember I said that you can toggle those settings here between points, inches, and centimeters right there. 
Well, that's what we want to do if we're working in the U.S. Of course, we're going to be in inches in the EU or other places. You're probably going to be in centimeters, and if you're designing for the UI, you're going to be in points. So heading to inches, which, by the way, this is the other way that you can change that. You click on this, and you can see that it's toggling as I click. We'll go back to inches. I get to determine what I want in this. This is, when you select FileMaker's report wizard, all it's doing is trying to help you along the way to create an ideal layout. It is almost never ideal, you just need to know about the settings. So when I go into browse mode, or preview mode, let's see, you can see that while I had the photo added, what FileMaker added instead was a merge value. And it does that because it expects that you're printing labels. We're not printing labels, we're using the label format for the purpose of images. So we go back into layout mode and that's not what we wanted. So FileMaker's wizard didn't even help us out. What we want to do is we want to add our photo directly to the layout. We will select and get rid of the label. We'll size this photo to what we want. Little trick here, if you hold down the option key, it will go to a constrained fixed proportion or a perfect square. As you hold that, you can see that I can size it to whatever I want in order to fit. Now, the reason that I specified four when I know that my page is really only going to hold three columns is so that I can introduce you to where these settings are controlled. Hence, if we had just simply said create a new layout, click finish instantly, it takes us into the layout, we're able to specify everything we want. That is going to be found under the layout setup. You can see that I'm right clicking and the bottom part or the non layout part. In fact, we can select here as well. I'm just in the habit of selecting in this uh, non-layout part of the whole of the layout, if that's how it comes out. But you will find all of the settings that you need in the printing area. This is where you can now specifically control the settings that we originally saw in the wizard. So in this case, I'm going to adjust down to three columns, and we also have the option to go across or down first. So depending on how you want to see the data, we're going to be going across, and then here's where we can also adjust those margins. So as soon as I click OK and it tells me my margins are may not work, you can see that FileMaker automatically adjusted these for me. So that's a pretty nice thing. Let's say I'm uh, let's drag this all the way out. We can, we know that we have three columns, but it is cutting it off. It was trying to show the two. I'm going to go back into that and see if FileMaker automatically adjusts this under the printing. So I'm going to switch this to two, but then to three, and then let's see what FileMaker does. I uh, did not adjust it in that particular case. I thought it was going to be magic, but FileMaker is not adjusting it. So we're going to have to manually pull this to where we want it to be. And essentially all we want this to do is have this last line right here simply align right there so that we get the maximized value. Now, can we figure that out? We certainly can. You can do your math by using the ruler to know that your page right here, what it's showing us, is actually at 8.25. You could do the math, figure it out, and actually input a value for this. I have, uh, it's not exact science in terms of doing this. In FileMaker with body parts, or with layout parts, excuse me, you can select that part, and for in this instance, with this selected, it's actually going to adjust or allow me to adjust the height value right here. We can see that it's a fixed value of two inches. Now I tried selecting this, which when we select and drag, you can see that as we drag, if we take a look at the measurements right here, we will see that it automatically adjusts, but we cannot manually enter it. I tried, it just doesn't work. So we're going to have to manually drag this until our third line basically matches up on the edge of our page in order to get the maximum, maximum width of three columns. So we'll get it as close as possible right here so that we can move on. We have to drag that points at a time and let's just drag it one pixel. There we go. So you can see we got pretty much on the line. That'll work for me. We've got our photo right here. Let's go ahead and add the ID. Um, we will add, now with any text, note that you can simply add uh, just the text itself. In fact, I prefer to do that. I prefer to grab the text tool drag that out into a fixed box, and then just start to add my values. I use the shortcut key of Command-Option-M, Control-Command-Option-M, 
control shift M or control alt M will basically give us our merge field right here, our merge field capability. Um, I put that in and let's say I want the category and then I want to hit a return and then I want the ID and I'm going to select the category, make that bold and put that in right here, maybe adjust my photo and get exactly what I want. So when we look at this in preview mode, we've got all of the different colors, but the request was this. I want to be able to categorize these such that they break at a certain point each time I hit a new category. This is very easy to solve. Remember, what we are doing is we are just modifying a layout. This is no different than any other layout in our system, and it will abide by all of the same rules. One of those rules is that we can have any layout part in this printed output, and that part will do what it's supposed to do. In the event of any divisions, what we really want is we want this right here. We simply want a sub-summary that when sorted by a given field will break at that point. So we choose sub-summary here, and we are going to choose our category for the breakpoint. Now there's only one other option that we need to use, and it is one of these two right here. It is either a page break before each occurrence, or a page break after every n number of occurrences. In this particular case, we just want that right there. Selecting that option alone with the subsummary is going to say, as soon as I hit a new category, as soon as I go from blue to green, I'm going to break at the first instance. So with that selected and with category chosen as our item, we're going to see that the background is going to change. I of course can drag this up to be as small as I want. And then all I have to do is simply put whatever I want in that particular area. So let's go up here. I'll simply use the same category right there. Make sure it fits within the actual area. Increase the size of it a little bit. And there's only one other thing I'm going to want, and that is going to be the footer part. So I'm going to right click. And the two ways that I can add a part is I could either simply drag here from the toolbar or my preferred method is to simply choose part setup. That will bring up a dialog and then I will simply create and add whatever part I want. In this case, I know that I want the page count at the bottom. So I'm going to select the footer and I'm going to say done right there. And then I can size this as needed. So when I go to preview this, we are going to see that we are not getting our division and that's simply because it is not sorted. As soon as I bring up the sort with a command S or control S and I sort all of these records, we are going to see that there it is, our sub summary is going to show up. And as we move from page to page, we are going to get that division. Now notice right here that as of right now, FileMaker doesn't know how many total pages there are. And this is a key thing that when it comes to scripting that we need to know. We need to know how many pages there are in total. In fact, this is the key that if we are going to total up and create a customized combined PDF, we need to know how many pages are in each of the collections of all of the individual PDFs that we're going to be merging together. So the easiest way to do this is you, I'm using the control down arrow right now in order to cycle through these pages. And we can see that it is currently showing me a total of five. In fact, if we go to the previous page, let me zoom out here. We can see that red does stop and then there is a page break and there is yellow. It starts at a new point. So what's important is this number right here. Now FileMaker gives us this number. I'm gonna open up the data viewer. We'll go to the watch variables. Let me get rid of all of those and we'll bring that out from behind me. And then we will create a new, pay, a new watch variable. In this watch variable, we are going to type in get page number. Now, this is available in all versions of FileMaker that I can think of going all the way back to a previous, I don't know, maybe FileMaker 7. I would have to go look at the documentation and see when this was made available. But this is the key when you're creating a multi 
P a multi-part PDF combined all together. You simply need to know that this collection of output is going to have five pages. This other collection of output is going to have three pages. And we are going to combine all of those to make the total of the eight pages. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's right. So with the total page count, you can then create your own custom page number, which is exactly what you have to do. Because remember, if you're going to rely on FileMaker to use its page numbering, you are not going to get the right result because the page numbering is only going to apply to each sub collection. Now FileMaker, I believe it was 19, did add a new function, get page count. So this particular function right here is only available in FileMaker versions 19 and higher, I believe. And that allows you to do more precise uh, work when it comes to getting your total page count. But again, this page count only applies to this specific uh, portion of the whole of the document. You still have to collect all of those numbers and total them together. So that is how you set up this particular report. Now all we have to do is combine the two different layouts, the title page and the catalog together, and then get our output and put them all together put them in a location and then bring them either back into FileMaker or attach them to an email and send them and do whatever we want. And that's what we're going to be talking about for the remainder of this video and then wrapping things up. Okay, now let's go through the scripting process in order to make all of this come together. Now you're going to see that we have a number of scripts in this solution and everything is broken down to be individual little pieces to the puzzle that all together work in order to create our final report. I highly suggest this is something that you do in your standard scripting process because it makes things a lot easier. One thing in particular that we're going to take a look at is this one, the page setup letter. Now notice that this script only has one step. Now the reason that we want to do things once is because that follows the principle of dry coding or do not repeat yourself. Now I am printing from multiple different layouts. If on each of those layouts I have a print setup step and I choose to go from a portrait orientation to a landscape orientation, I now have to modify that in multiple places. So we always want to do things just once and be able to modify that in one place and have it affected across multiple other places where it's used. So that is why this one script with one step, even though it seems like it's just adding extra burden to my the whole of my management, in other words, this is a script that adds, if I didn't have this script, I would have one less script in order to manage. But the counter is, if I add that one step, obviously, to the other scripts, then it becomes a bit more of a hassle. So each given layout gets its own dedicated script, such as print the title page, then print the catalog, and then up at the top, you can see print report. Now, print report is going to be the driving master script that is going to bring all of the things together. Think of it as the conductor to an orchestra. It is going to conduct the process and it's going to tell the woodwinds when to play and it's going to tell the brass when to play. All the different parts, it brings them together. All the rest of your scripts focus on just their individual part, exactly like an orchestra. So when we look at this, we look at the script, you can see that we have a fixed value called pages before. Now all this is, is this is what I'm using in order to calculate or total up my page numbers. Now you are probably going to have a completely different system. If you have a PDF that's combined from three different layouts, who knows how many pages those have, but you're going to have to total them up and figure out the correct way to get the page number on the page. Let's go take a quick look at the layout. In the Manage Layouts, when we look at the catalog and open that up, and I'll go into Layout Mode, we can see that we are using a merge field. That merge field is this one right here, page number of, and then I have a merge global variable, pages.count. So in this scenario, I had to figure out, or you'll have to figure out from a scripting standpoint, how many total pages there are across all of the multiple PDF outputs from your individual layouts. 
You total them up, and then you'll put them into something like a global variable where you can merge it directly onto the bottom of the PDF. Now, what's the FileMaker native method? Well, the FileMaker native method, since we're selected in this text, is to simply go up to the Insert menu and use the page number symbol. Hopefully, I'm not blocking that. But as we can see, this will not work when we are combining multiple PDFs together. We have to programmatically figure that out, calculate it for ourselves, which we are doing. So when we look at the page number calculation field, which as I bring up the define database, we look at this, we can see number one, it is unstored. And that is because we need it to do its calculations live real time. When we look at the actual calculation itself, we can see that it is using the get page number plus the pages before. Now in this example that I'm showing you, this demo, I know that there is only one title page. So pages before is simply going to be one and the page number is going to take that one and add it to whatever the page count is. So on my actual catalog, page one gets one added to it and it becomes page two of whatever the total is and the total pages count is simply taking the total of all of the pages it finds and adding that to the pages before and that's how i get my total count walk through the example if everything i said doesn't make sense and you'll be able to get what is happening so as we close this window and go back to the script we can see that after we've added those pages we are now going to perform the individual parts. First off, we are going to print the title page or call that dedicated script, which is going to output the title page to a known location. And we're going to walk through that script. I won't be walking through the print catalog because it's almost exactly the same as the print title page. We're just going to a different layout. Although with the catalog, we do need to total up all of those pages. So we'll, put, we'll take a quick look at that script. The result, you can see right here, using the get script result, this particular script right here is defining where the PDF is going to initially be created. Now the key to making any customized output for PDF where you're combining things is when you're using FileMaker's save records as PDF, you have the option to append records onto an existing PDF. I don't know when FileMaker added that, but I'll give you a clue here as we walk through the scripts in terms of how you would do this on mobile versus desktop versus web. So we have a statement that says, if we get a valid path back from this actually running, meaning it created the actual title page first, then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, print the catalog. And this particular script is expecting that there's a title page or however many PDFs prior to it, and it is going to append that on at the fixed path, the path that we got back, back, which is being defined within this script. So now let's take a look at the script that actually creates the title page, then the report, and we'll wrap it up. At the very bottom of here, you can see that we are simply taking that ultimate PDF and we are putting it into a container field so that we can review that here in FileMaker. Whatever you do with the PDF is completely up to you. You could attach it to an email, although you won't be able to do it with native FileMaker tools. You'll probably need to use a plugin. But you get to deter determine what you're going to do with that PDF once it's completed. So let's go through the title page. All of this works pretty much the same way in terms of how I implement. First off, up at the top, what I like to do is I do not like to interrupt or mess with the user experience. And here comes the clue about the different ways you can do this based on different devices. On iOS and on a mobile device, you simply have a single window application. The same thing more or less applies on the web as well. On desktop, whether it's Macintosh or Windows, we're going to be able to create a new window off screen. So you can see the first thing I like to do is create a new window. Now this may be a little odd to you, but I'm creating a window with the document uh, or with a UUID. Basically, this is just a randomly generated number. The reason is the window is going to be off screen. So it doesn't matter what the window is called. But by doing this, I have created a reference uh, value that I can explicitly say, I want to close this window and this window only at the end of the script. 
So what is the name that you want for the report? One key thing to remember is that no matter what you call the report when you generate it, we're gen generating the report temporarily so that we can bring that report back into FileMaker. And when you send something out of FileMaker, you can call it whatever you want. So renaming the report is going to be completely possible based on a field value or whatever you want. Finally, we have the location. It is always best and easiest to use the temporary path or the location that all computers have access to to write data to. We are re able to reliably write to this and we're simply going to combine that temporary path and the name. We're going to create a new window and what I do is I create that window off screen. An off screen window simply means that I am going to use the get window desktop height and width. It's simply going to create a window all the way down here off the screen and you cannot see this. This doesn't mess with the user interface. I really like this. It works for desktop and mobile. Of course, if you're going to support this on multiple platforms, you are going to put in conditions that say something like if get uh, platform, uh, get system platform, I think it's equals three, that would be mobile, uh, four I believe is web, what have you. You're going to use the logic that's going to allow you to determine whether or not you are going to drive this process using a new window or if you're going to do something else. What would that something else be? It would be running this script on server. You can of course generate the PDF on the server, we can always find out whether a server step is compatible or not by simply going up to this option right here and saying, I want compatibility based on server. So when we select server, we can see that it does not become grayed out, but the save records as PDF is still available on server. And if we go over to the documentation for save records as PDF, and we scroll down, we are going to be able to see under the compatibility that FileMaker Server is partial support, FileMaker Cloud Products is partial support, and so is WebDirect as well, and FileMaker Go. So what does that partial mean? It simply means that as we scroll down, we're going to be able to see what is or is not available. In this case, with FileMaker Server and FileMaker Cloud, we simply can't use the automatically open file. Well, of course, it's being generated on server. I can't open a file on a client computer that's generated all the way on a computer maybe hundreds of miles away from me. I also cannot create an email attachment but that's really not a big deal because if we were going to be emailing, we'd probably be better off using an API and some type of service, maybe a plugin like Monkey Bread or Base Elements or what have you. So with the window created, we now target the actual layout that we want to go to. We're going to perform a find of anything that is necessary. Now in this particular instance, I know that I only want one page. So that's why we have these steps of isolate records, which basically we show all of the records, then we omit a certain record, then we show omitted only. Now there are other ways to do this. Actually one of the better ways to find a zero found set, which is what this is doing. It's actually creating a zero found set and then showing only one record. So in other words, we are ensuring that everything is shown. We are then saying one of you go away and then we were saying invert the found set so that you only show the one record that I made go away so that I only have one record. And in this case, because the title page isn't merging any data, it really doesn't matter. If we had a specific thing we wanted to do, performing the find is much easier. If you need to find a, a establish a zero found set, if you ever need that in FileMaker, the easiest way to find a zero found set is to search on your primary key for a value that is equal to nothing. In other words, I want to find all records that have an empty primary key. You're going to need to set the error capture on, but that will find that will basically create a zero found set, which we don't need in this case. We just need one record. So here you can see we're performing the script that if we're going to be printing to a letter size format, we are going to call the dedicated page le setup letter, which is just that one single step. Well, the print catalog does it too, and that's where we have our dry code. 
Then we get to the all magic step. This one step is what makes it all happen. Save records as PDF, and it's simply a matter of the options that you choose. You can see that we're specifying our path, which we know is the temporary path. In this particular case, because we are only printing one record, we can see that we are going to use the, uh, under the specify options, we are going to use the current record. Um, we could choose a blank record or the records being browsed. The records being browsed is going to be used in the catalog because of course we want all the records. This is our magic option right there. Append to existing PDF, which we will see is pretty much the main difference between this script for the title page and then the catalog page. So in other words, having one script, such as this script, drive the whole process, each subsequent call to an output where you're outputting more PDF, you simply need to pass the path along so that that path goes into each of the successive calls where this particular option of append to existing PDF can continually be used. As long as you have a path to a PDF that does exist, we can just keep appending to it. And one thing I haven't tried, but you probably can think about this. If you have a boilerplate document, meaning an existing PDF, think about a legal contract. If that legal contract has five pages that are at the beginning of all legal contracts, and it's only the sixth page that actually needs to be added, is there any point in continuously outputting that every time? Probably not. You can store a PDF document with the first five pages in a container, output that to the temporary space, then just output your final page and merge it onto the PDF that was already uh, existing that came from your container field. It's a great way to simply just make your custom document, but not take the processing power to make the whole custom document. Don't output what you don't need to output because it's a fixed static value. Just put it in place where it needs to be. So if we didn't successfully print, let's get me out of the way there. If we didn't successfully print, then we're going to have a problem. Now remember this title page output needs to return a valid path. So I'm simply just taking the opportunity that if output had a problem, I'm going to say that the path value is going to be false. Now the reason for this is, and there's probably other ways that you could do this, but I wanted to show you that when we get into the next script, you can determine whether that is a true valid path or it is a false equation. Here at the end, we close the window, targeting the specific window variable, which ensures that we close that window, and then we exit the script with the path. Now the path being returned is either a false value or it's a valid path. So when we go back to our main report, and we can see that when we get the script result, from the initial title page, this is where we have logic that says if path. Now a valid path will be true, but a false value will not be true. So if we don't have a valid value, meaning the title page wasn't actually generated, then there's no point in generating the print catalog because there will be no PDF there in order to append to, unless it happened from a prior script call which is always a good idea to clean up after yourself, something I don't have in this script. So take a look at the print catalog. You can see that it's roughly the same thing. I have a window, I have a path, but in this case, the path is getting its uh, from the inbound script parameter, meaning we're passing it along to each of the different parts of the multi-part PDF. I'm creating my window off screen. Now in this case, this is for the purpose of testing. I, as a developer, want to see the process right here. I will, in the version of the file that you have, this will be turned off, and then this one will be turned on because it's creating an off-screen window because of those values that we have right there. We go to the catalog window. In this case, we're going to show all of our records. A perform find, in your case, would probably find what you want. We then sort it so that the sub-summary will actually render correctly, and then we simply use our page setup so that we have dry code. We enter into preview mode, and this is how we get our page count, these three steps right here. We go into pay, uh, preview mode. We do not leave the pause on. In fact, you need to turn this off. 
we go to the very last record, and when we're on the last record, or excuse me, the last page in this case, you can see that it's either record, or request, or page. When we're on the last page, that's when we can use the get page number. You can see right here that I'm saying the pages totaled count is equal to the get the page number plus the pages before. So this is how you just add each successive collection of pages on. Now, if you have a lot of different uh, PDFs being combined together, the unfortunate downside to this technique is you have to go gather all of your pages before you actually output the PDF itself. Why? Because you need the total number of pages to be in the variable that's merged onto the layout before you print the layout. Otherwise, if you print the layout, you won't have the bright page totaling for your pages. And that's why this is so simple in this particular example, but you're gonna have to figure it out if it's a little bit more complex than this. Finally, we have the same thing. In this case, we're saving the PDF. And of course, as I mentioned, in this particular version, we are appending to an existing PDF, which we already have the path, which is right there. Again, we're going to have an error that if the catalog itself was an output, we're going to return a false. We're closing the specific window here on desktop. Again, you can have conditions that if it's mobile, you're not going to have created a new window, etc. We exit the script and the report is actually output. Once it is output, then we simply just say, what do we want to do with it? In this case, I'm using a single step, which is super simple. I'm inserting the file that is coming from the path right there. I've carried the path along and it goes into the container. When we look at the container, we're going to go into layout mode. This particular container, which is our report, which this looks funky because I have to turn off my page margins and my page breaks because I'm defining the UI here instead of a printed report. This report we're going to see in the area right here of the data tab when we select that and scroll down. We are going to see down here at the very bottom that we have a couple of options. FileMaker defaults to this option right here, images, PNG, uh, bitmap. This is the normal default for a container when you put it on the layout. If you want the user to be able to interact with a PDF, you need to switch it to this one, interactive content, PDF, MP3, etc. And what will happen is FileMaker's container field, when we print the catalog, will use whatever the operating system has as support for the viewer for that particular extension or that file type. In this case, I believe it's using Preview. If you have Adobe Acrobat installed, then it will look totally different within this container because it will be using that program in order to view that particular extension. So if you want to change this, you have to change in the operating system how and what is shown here. If you don't want to use Adobe Acrobat and you want to use something else, then that's a setting you need to change within the operating system. So once we have gone through all of those steps with all of the inf that information, we have our final output, our PDF. And this simple script right here, when we click on open report, all it is doing is it is sending this report out of FileMaker out of this particular container and opening it with the operating system native tool. Remember what I stated earlier, as I close all of the scripts, we'll go ahead and save any changes to that. This open report, what happens is you are able to simply export any file that you want in the settings on this. As we take a look at, when we specify the um, output field right here, what tells the operating system open it is this one right here. And of course, as the documents uh, showed us, if we generate the PDF on server, we of course are not able to use these two options. They simply don't apply because they're desktop specific. But we can generate the PDF on the server side, which is what I suggest for any complex PDF. Run this as a server side script, meaning all of the data is on FileMaker server, generate the PDF over there, populate it into the container field, and then the client will simply just show that PDF right there, ready for the user to export it from the container field to their local temporary folder, and then open it up with the preview or with the editor or whatever is designated in order to preview that PDF. That is my preferred method when it comes to really complex PDFs that I'm natively doing with FileMaker. I'm going to do those on the server side. 
So that brings us to a close for this particular video. I hope this has answered the subscribers question in particular in terms of how to get all of those breaks. That's simply a checkbox. But if you have other things that you want to add, maybe pages before and pages after, this is the information that you need in order to create your own customized PDF output. As always, I'd like to wish you much luck with your own FileMaker development, and until next time, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.